Hello, hello, this is Sonny Melendrez, and welcome to the positive side of the radio spectrum. This is the all-new Sonny Melendrez Show. Every week, we strive to bring you entertainment and inspiration through storytelling, fascinating guests, exclusive celebrity interviews, and all delivered with lots of enthusiasm. And I can't wait to introduce you to my very special guest this week, Scott Carley, the Change Energizer. But first... We're brought to you by Ideal Precision Roofing, serving Bernie and the Texas Hill Country. Now we're headed into another one of those great times of the year when it starts to cool down in South Texas. And now before the holidays, it's a great time to call Ideal Precision Roofing, especially if you suspect that you might have hail damage from our recent storms. Now you may have seen my latest television commercial for Ideal in which I stand in the middle of a San Antonio cul-de-sac pointing out that at least five of the houses behind me all chose ideal precision roofing. The question I get asked the most is, is that really true? Yes, it is, and chances are it might happen in your neighborhood once you call ideal precision roofing because you're bound to be asked, who did your beautiful roof? Call them today for a free inspection at 210 210- 485-1553 or visit idealprecisionroofing.com and tell them that Sonny Melendrez sent you. And now, on with the show! Sunny Radio, sunnyradio.com. Well, my guest today is an author, a speaker, and a great friend. His name is Scott Carley. They call him the Change Energizer. Well, recently, Scott shared a secret with me. He calls it the Declaration of Success. Writing affirmations for 559 consecutive days every morning. It took him through COVID and kept him on course. And several of those goals and affirmations he wrote daily have become a reality. What a pleasure to welcome my friend, Scott Carley. Hey, so glad to be here, Sonny. So glad to be on with you. I've looked forward to this interview since I uh, approached you about it. And, you know, I have to tell you that I've watched you on and off stage. Uh And I really, no, I really appreciate your energy. You know, you go by the, uh, the handle, the change energizer, and you're certainly that. Because when it's time for you to perform, when it's time for you to give to your audience, I'll tell you, you do it full speed ahead and just remarkably so wonderfully polished and professional. Well, thank you very much. You know, I've had a lot of role models uh, over the years and I've watched their energy and I've been very impressed with it. And by the way, you're one of those and people do, they are attracted to energy. Now, have you always been that way all your life? I have when I'm at my natural state. Uh, When I first started speaking, I would do that weird thing of all of a sudden I would calm down and be way too structured until I finally would get into my groove. Once I get into my groove, then I I was very energetic. So I've had really learned how to be energetic from the start. I, I used to tell people I take a long runway to get going. And some of my coaches have taught me No, you are on an aircraft carrier, and when they give you that signal go, they're going to hit the launch, and you're going to fly off the top of that aircraft carrier. So I had to learn to do that as well, and that's a learned skill. That's a great analogy. You're absolutely right. I want to ask you what it was like, and I ask all my guests this, what it was like for you as a kid. My parents divorced when I was three, and my dad, who I would live with during the summer, he ruled with a pretty strong hand. And so if, if I started, you know, if my leg started to jitter, he'd put his hand on it and say, we can stop that. <laughs> and so he he kind of squashed a bunch of that when I was around him. But as soon as I got out, man, I was, uh, my energy was back and going. And did you have any idea as you started to grow, you know, went into your teens, what you wanted to do with your life? 
not until uh, late high school. Uh, I was really good in uh, industrial arts, woodworking. Uh, actually, beginning in junior high, I started building uh, projects. So in eighth grade, I built a eight foot china cabinet. Ninth grade, I built a uh, a gun uh, cabinet. And then in high school, I built furniture and won blue ribbons with it. And while everybody was out doing football, I was building furniture. So I thought I was going to be a cabinet maker, a furniture maker. And then in late high school, God really got a hold of my heart. I'd, I'd been through a major conversion in junior high. And so when I left high school, I went to Bible college. All my formal training is in theology. Wow. And so when I got out of college, I became a youth leader in Los Angeles. And then I uh, went to Louisiana. I was a youth pastor there for a year. And then I married a girl from my home church. And we started traveling as an evangelist for almost 10 years, a church growth consultant and evangelist. So really in college is where I, I had to learn how to speak. Mm -hmm. and give presentations. And in my freshman year of college, I actually won second place in an all-college speech contest. I can hardly believe that I won second place. And you still have the trophy. I still have the trophy. It was packed away. I ran across it a few months ago, and I thought, I'm pulling that puppy out. (laughs) <laughs> good for you yeah i feel the same way i have one for most improved g- a bowler <laughs> on the uh, school high school bowling team so your speaking career really started as as an evangelist as a pastor that's now, right when did it transition from that to what you do now oh well, that's a, a question i get asked all the time and uh, the short story is my marriage had a train wreck and I went through a divorce and the ministry and divorce do not work well together. And so I transitioned into the business world and started coaching on priority management. And that led to speaking engagements. And so I did a lot of coaching and a lot of speaking engagements that were really not for pay. But about six years ago, I made a very conscious effort to get back on the main stage joined NSA and, um, and the rest is history. What is it that really excites you about being in front of an audience? You know, I know what it feels like to be caught up in a a hairball and problems and struggle with trying to find an answer to, uh, you know, to become productive again. And every time I get in front of an audience, I'm thinking, I'm going to answer to somebody's prayer out there. Somebody is struggling to try to go where they want to go, be what they want to be. And if I can share some motivation or some answers or some how-to nuggets that can release them to pursue their passion and their vision, I have done my job. And every time I get up to speak, that is what's behind what I'm doing. That is a great mindset. Now, I want to ask you about something that I noticed. In fact, you were posting this on LinkedIn, and I thought to myself, I've got to find out what it is Scott has been doing, writing these affirmations going on two yeah. years. Tell me about that. Yeah, that was a, that was a big deal for me. Uh, about three years ago, I joined a book mastermind, and we went through uh, several books, but one of those was Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Oh, my word, that was a a fabulous book. And in it, he talks about being crystal clear about where you're headed and what you want to do. And he also talks about what will you give in exchange for that? And so as we begin to wrap up the book, the person that was leading the group, Dan Forbes, uh, he he was telling us about um, a writing, a journal that he was doing every day. And he would spend, you know, 20 minutes or so writing in his journal about his top two or three goals, and then what he would give in exchange for those goals. And so I asked him if he would show me the, the template. And of course, he took me to Think and Grow Rich, 
We'd also studied the book called The Slight Edge, uh, and it, it has a lot of that similar thing in it. And so I, uh, I came up with my template of what I call my declaration for success. You know, I, I write down in a, a present format, I am Scott Carley, the keynote energizer. Uh, I, I give 75 keynote presentations a year. So I would write down six or seven of my goals and my projected goals, where I wanted to be in a year or in two years, and I'd put a date on it. And then the second half was, what would I give in exchange for achieving those goals? So what work am I going to do? And I would write those things down. And there were, you know, six or seven of those as well. It was tough. And the first 30 days, he gave me a 30-day challenge. Oh, my word, that was 30 days every morning to write that stuff out, really crowded up my schedule, but it, it helped me to, to form that habit. And I've seen one of these pages and that does not take a short amount of time to do. I mean, you're really committed to that time block each morning. Do you do that first off in the morning or what time do you do that? Yeah, it's, it's uh, I won't say it's the very first thing that I do, but it's in the, the first third of the morning hours, um, you know, I, I get up, I get settled. I take my journal either outside or, or here in my office and I write it down. And it, it did take about 30 minutes when I first started because I'm really having to concentrate, think about what I'm writing, flip over to the last page. What did I write yesterday? It takes me a, a while for it to get ingrained in my head. But after a few months, I can pop that thing out a lot quicker and I, I write it down because now mental memory, you know, uh, has, has, is there and right. just a lot, lot easier because now it's ingrained. I've got those trenches dug in my head. And I noticed that you say, I am. So everything is in the present tense as if it's already happening, correct? That's exactly right. And that's a, that was really, really helpful because, you know, sometimes I would write some things down and, and when discouragement would come in or, or the facts of the day or the facts of the week, I would say, oh my God, I am so far from that. And then it would come to me, this is your declaration of success. You are claiming this. Well, you know, as I, as soon as I got to looking at that and trying to decide and I've heard people make affirmations and declarations, and I just roll my eyes sometimes. But I look at the, our founding fathers, the Declaration of Independence. Remember that, that document that we all, or they all sure. signed on July 4th, 1776? So I looked at that to find out a little bit more about it. Did you know that it was in some ways almost two years later before we won the war. We didn't win the war on July 4th, 1776. It was two years later that we actually won the war. And it dawned on me, these guys made a declaration of success, of independence. And it really empowered me, freed me up to write those things down for where I'm headed and have that mindset now. Great observation and a wonderful analogy of what it is they did and what it is you're doing. At what point then? I mean, you're making these affirmations. You want these things to, to come to fruition. Scott, at what time or at what point, how many days did it take before you started actually seeing uh, these things come true? Oh, it was um, some of them not very long. Um, you know, one of the things that, that I, I put in my affirmation was that, you know, I'm, I'm speaking 75 times a year. Well, I, you know, I started blogging all of those. And so I'm speaking 45 times a year. Well, it's not 75, but it's 45. So that means that I'm on my way to what I'm doing. And then some of what I would give in exchange was three signature keynotes, three kick-ass signature keynotes that would just rock. Well, I had one. 
And so I, I worked on that one, got it going, but then I got another one and I, I felt like I needed three. And, and when I got that second one really down and that was probably 90 days, maybe a little longer into writing this down, I realized this thing is taking me where I'm supposed to be going. Now I have three signature kick-ass keynotes that are in demand, that have won awards and people want to hear them. They call them, I got a call the other day, and as a matter of fact, to that awards banquet, Scott, there's a signature keynote. We did it. That's the one we want. Mm, mm. And that's exactly what I was going after. Well, you know, it's funny because uh, comedians have the same uh, dilemma. Uh, when they say they have a set, it's usually 45 minutes to an hour. And that's 45 minutes to an hour of content. And it's not just content. It's content that works. And right. so I'm sure that uh, these three keynotes that you've got, which are, I would imagine, an hour in length, you really worked it not only in putting it together, writing it, but also uh, testing the waters. Oh, absolutely. And one of the things that Toastmasters and NSA has taught me is practice, 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 practice. Right. And there are some of those that I have practiced as many as 25 times before I deliver them to that custom audience. I mean, you have to know your stuff if you're going to be in that top percentage. Exactly. And when you go to Toastmasters, uh, if anyone listening is wanting to be a speaker, that's where I always tell them where to start because there you can learn. They can get in front of a not only an audience, but a supportive audience. And the format uh, at the Toastmasters that I've gone to here in San Antonio, the Business and Professional Toastmasters, their format allows for constructive criticism. And I'm sure you've had the same experience. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, you know, at first it's really tough to take. Yeah. Uh, and um, I, went, I did a memorization of some things and, and got some criticism on the way I delivered it and how quickly I went. And I just, I, I bowed up against it. And I just had to swallow my pride and remember that these are the people that are listening to me. And if they don't like it, I have to make some changes. So, wow, it's, yeah, Toastmasters has been a huge help for me. NSA is really designed for, for the professionals who are already making a living at speaking, not learning to speak, but they're already making a living at it. Now, wouldn't you say, Scott, that what's important about putting together a keynote, and you may even have uh, a text of the whole thing, when you deliver it, it's not like you memorize something and now you're reciting it. Tell the difference. There's a little difference in, in delivering a, a keynote, especially one that really hits the mark, don't you say? Absolutely. I, I do think that it's important to have an outline. And so you know where you're going, maybe an introduction and a few points so that you, you have a framework to go on in your keynote, especially because as a professional speaker, people who heard you here hire you to speak somewhere else, but they want to hear the same thing. So an outline gives you a way to stay on track for where you're going. Now, there may be poems or statistics or other thing in the middle of your keynote that you have memorized. Like in one of my keynotes, I talk about Casey at the bat, and I've memorized that whole presentation and even rewrote the ending of it. So there are portions of something you may have to memorize, but not your whole keynote. You need the liberty and the flexibility to connect with your crowd and respond in kind to the audience that's there. And when you connect with you, when you connect with them and start responding, suddenly now you have a keynote they will never forget. That's true. They say people not remember what you said, but they'll remember how you made them feel. That's and it right. sounds like that's what you're talking about. You mentioned Casey at the bat, and you actually go out when you do that particular keynote in a baseball uniform. 
Tell yeah, us about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I got inspired to do that presentation, I first thing I did was I went down and bought a baseball uniform, had it monogrammed with the Mudville nine. Yeah. I bought a hat that said Mudville on it. Uh, did it in red and white because that was my favorite color. And I knew that if I could, when I started making this presentation, I wanted to do it so that they could envision it. They could see Casey picking up that bat and swinging that bat and missing mm. or swinging that bat and knocking it out of the park. And I want to tell you, Sonny, the people that have come back to comment to me, they love the fact that I'm in a uniform. I've got the bat. I'm acting it out. And whether you call it a theatrical keynote or an illustrated keynote, however you want to title it, it has a 65% higher retention rate than just getting up in a coat and tie and speaking. I believe it. So now are you hidden? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes I come out uh, behind the curtain on the stage and, you know, here's, here's Casey at the bat. <laughs> Other times I'm, I'm just there and they're looking around, you know, who's this guy, what's he doing in a baseball uniform? Is he here to represent a, you know, one of the <laughs> baseball teams, Mudville, Who, who's Mudville? I've never heard of Mudville. <laughs> so it doesn't matter to me because when I get up there, I'm going to pick that bat up and I'm going to knock it out of the park for them. Exactly. I get up there and act out that character. And I want them to remember it. If Casey at the bat can do it, you can do it. And that's my goal. Powerful. Now, I mentioned that uh, you use the moniker, the change energizer. I would imagine that you have a keynote that is specifically for change. And lately, that's what uh, it's been all about with companies, organizations, all kinds of groups, right? Yes. One of my most recent keynotes, and I love this one, and we did it. The science and struggle behind big achievements. And the bottom line is, if you want to have big achievements, there's some formulas that you're going to need to adopt. And that's going to bring about change in you. And so it's really funny, Sonny. Nobody really likes change. They talk about change. They want others to change. But you know, I'm not going to change much, but people love to be energized. We're going to energize your schedule. We're going to energize your attitude. We're going to energize your mindset. Oh yeah. Yeah. I love that. And so the change energizer energizes change in people's thinkings, their habits and their actions to make them top achievers. Do you find that there are a lot of people who need that, uh, they need to be energized, especially due to COVID and all the things that have happened in the last, uh, you know, going on two years. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of people beat down and they've had a lot of disappointments, things that have been taken away from them. They'll never get back. And they're they're having a tough time. And how do you and energize them? Be energized. Um, you know, one of the things that when I was in church work, we used to say, if you don't have faith, borrow my faith, borrow my confidence and, and use it until you get your own. And I tell people that now, if you don't have the energy, you don't have the excitement, borrow mine, borrow mine. What would the change energizer do? Boy, he got me excited, got me confident that I can do this. Borrow that energy and use it until you get your own motivation and your own energy. And people do that. People call, come up to me often after any presentation, they will say, man, if I could just bottle up your energy and take it with me, I would. I would imagine that there are a lot of people who even write to you and tell you about their stories and maybe how you change their lives. Uh, and it happens year after year. Yeah, I do. I, and, and some of that I ask for them. I, I'll say when you've had a big change, when you put this stuff to work and, and you want to be able to say, we did it. I want you to write me and tell me how it went and what you did. And I'm, I'm blown away at some stuff that, you know, never occurs to me, but somehow or another, it motivated them to go out and do something that was really important to their life, whether it was personal 
or professional, whatever it was. And to me, that's, that's the reward of doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Scott, what would your advice be to someone who has had an inner dream, someone who's always thought about being a speaker, but never quite pursued it, uh, maybe even because uh, nobody believed in them or they didn't feel that they did? What would you say to them? I would say you, you have to believe in, in whatever dream you've been given more than anybody else. Go join a Toastmasters and learn how to share your dream. Toastmasters will help you to articulate your feelings. There's a lot of us who have feelings and a dream, but we, we can't get it out. We, we don't know how to say it. And a place like Toastmasters will help you to get those words out. Once you get those words out in just a five to seven minute presentation, then you can make yourself available to organizations that will bring you in to inspire them or to share your passion, whatever it is. You know, I know people who've had cancer and they are scared to death of styrofoam and plastics and other things. And so they've developed keynote presentations, five to seven minute presentations. And there's an audience for that who wants to hear about how you can push those things out of your life, use other things so you're not exposed to toxic material. I applaud that. So whatever it is that's inside of you, go join a Toastmasters and, and let them help you learn how to articulate how you feel. Great advice, Scott. All right, I want to bring it back around to your declaration. This is a page that you've written. It takes you a few minutes. Now it takes you less than it did when you first started. You've done it for almost two years. What are those results at this point compared to what you started writing about a year and a half ago? So it's been really, it's been really exciting to see doors open and opportunities to present themselves that I would never have recognized had I not written down those declarations. And when I, I write down declarations, like one of mine was to talk to 20 event planners a week. And I'm thinking to myself, where am I going to get the name <laughs> of 20 event planners? And suddenly something appears to me where I can, I can purchase the names of 200 event planners and get that every month so that I can contact them. That would never have happened if I hadn't made that part of my declaration. So there are things like that, that as you get clear about where you're going, those things will start showing up. And sometimes they've, they've always been there, but you weren't looking for them. But now that you've identified it, you recognize, oh, that is an opportunity. I want to dig into that. I believe it. There's a great Chinese saying translated says, the work will show you how. That's good. I like that. There's, a, there's another thing that I want to leave with you before I go, and that is stamina. Uh, in, the, in the book, The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson, it's a fabulous book. That was a game changer book for me. He talks about how there, there is no silver bullet. There's no overnight success. People that you see that just popped up and you go, oh, my God, they're an overnight success. So that didn't happen. It was years and years and years and years and years and years and years of compound interest, of little increments of things that they did, all the calls that they made, the relationships that, that they built, the people that they got to know, and developing their, uh, their product, their systems, their presentations, whatever it was. And then one day that compound interest explodes and suddenly it looks like an overnight success. And one of the things that I believe is separating me from other people is that I'm, I'm creating the stamina to stay with those little things that have to be done every day to bring you that ultimate success. And this writing, this book, my declaration of success are those little things that, that add up. And wow, I'm reaping some of those benefits. 
Well, Scott, I congratulate you on all your success. I look forward to seeing you again. And I want to tell you what an inspiration you are, not only to me, but now to people who are just finding out about Scott Carley. And where would they find you on the web? Real easy. ScottCarley.com or TheChangeEnergizer.com. I'm easy to find. There you go. Thank you so much, Scott. Hope to see you soon. And uh, I really appreciate it, my friend. Hey, thank you, Sonny. Well, there you have it. My special visit with Scott Carley. For more information about his declaration of success, along with Scott's website and more, visit SunnyRadio.com slash show. That's SunnyRadio.com slash show. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to my podcast. Heard by thousands worldwide, so you don't miss a single episode. Until next time, I'm Sonny Melendrez, reminding you to be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a great battle. Bye-bye.